With the advent of photography, we gained the ability to capture moments of our lives for many years. And sometimes, thanks to the camera, we can capture things that are hard to believe. In this video, I present to you a selection of the most mysterious photographs that defy explanation. Enjoy watching. In 2019, during the exploration of Mars, the Curiosity rover managed to capture a strange glowing object. This photograph quickly spread across the internet and sparked much debate. Ufologists were convinced that the light came from alien spaceships, which like Earthlings periodically explore the Red Planet. There were many arguments supporting this assumption. However, scientists were quick to provide a scientific explanation for the phenomenon. According to astronomers, the light captured in the photograph is not a signal from aliens. In fact, this phenomenon was caused by sunlight reflecting off a distant rock or cosmic rays hitting the sensitive detectors of the navigation camera. Scientists explained that they occasionally observe similar flashes, and in all these cases, the light appears in photos on the horizon in the same direction as the midday sun relative to the rover's location in the west or northwest. So, unfortunately, this flash cannot be considered proof of alien existence. The Grand Canyon, located in Arizona, is one of the deepest canyons in the world. It stretches 446 kilometers in length, is 29 kilometers wide at its widest point, and reaches a maximum depth of 1,857 meters. The Grand Canyon is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is considered one of the natural wonders of the world. It is a unique geological formation where scientists have discovered traces of four geological eras of the Earth. This marvel was formed about six million years ago as a result of a long erosion process. About 65 million years ago, the uplift of the Colorado Plateau occurred due to tectonic movements which in turn changed the direction and speed of the Colorado River's flow. The river began to flow faster and more intensely, gradually carving out the rock, thus forming the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon territory is a reservation for Native American tribes, specifically the Navajo, Havasupai, and Hualapai. These people consider this place sacred and tell many legends about it. According to one legend, evil spirits that can shapeshift into humans sometimes roam this land. It's unclear how true this is, but a group of travelers managed to capture a rather strange photo that may serve as proof that the Native American legends are not just myths. In the photo, we see one of the tourists standing near the edge of a cliff with the Grand Canyon in the background. At first glance, there's nothing unusual about the image, but if you look closely, you can see a mysterious man in a black cloak standing in the bushes. According to the photographers, when they took this picture, no one else was present in that area. So, who appeared in the shot? Unfortunately, this question remains unanswered. In 2017, a digital version of a painting by Austrian artist Ferdinand Georg Waldmuller appeared online. This painting, titled The Expected One, was created in 1860. It gained popularity in modern times due to a suspicious object. At first glance, the painting's plot is simple. We see a young man holding flowers and a girl walking towards him. Now pay attention to the strange, small, rectangular object the girl is holding. Internet users immediately saw it as an iPhone. Indeed, if we didn't know the painting was from the 19th century, it might look like the girl is holding a phone. Just look at how leisurely she walks, her head bowed, completely absorbed by the small object in her hands. It's very similar to how modern people walk, focused on their smartphones. So who is this girl? Could she have been a time traveler? Of course, the girl isn't holding a phone. Art historian Gerald Weinpolter explained that the character in the painting is holding a small prayer book. However, it's not surprising that many people saw it as a phone as our imagination tends to associate unknown objects with those we commonly see in everyday life. In 2023, a girl shared this photograph on social media, along with an unusual story connected to the image. In the photo, 
we see an elderly woman, the grandmother of the person who took the picture. She was captured here during her birthday in 1997, when her relatives came to visit. Sadly, a month later, the woman passed away suddenly in her sleep. When the girl decided to look through the photos of her grandmother again, she found this one and noticed a figure above the old woman's head. After carefully examining the face of this person, she realized it was her grandfather, who had died long ago. Naturally, this shocked the girl. It is believed that deceased relatives sometimes come to their loved ones to take them to the afterlife. It seems that the girl's grandfather returned to this world to take his wife with him. And indeed, a month after this photo was taken, the girl's grandmother passed away. Coincidence? Perhaps. But this could also suggest that the souls of our loved ones may truly return to the living world when they sense that the lives of those they loved are nearing their end. On November 19, 1995, a large fire broke out in an old building known as Wemtown Hall in the English county of Shropshire. Local residents gathered to watch as the fire consumed the building. Among the crowd was a man named Tony O'Rahilly, who decided to take some photographs of the burning structure. When he reviewed the pictures, he saw a girl standing in the doorway in one of the shots. O'Rahilly immediately realized that this was no ordinary girl, but most likely a ghost, as it would have been impossible for a person to be inside a building engulfed in flames. Furthermore, neither he nor anyone else had seen the girl at the scene, otherwise, the firefighters would have rescued her. Shocked by the photo, O'Rahilly decided to send it to the Association for the Scientific Study of Anomalous Phenomena. The experts there forwarded the image for analysis to Dr. Vernon Harrison. After examining the photo, Harrison concluded that it was not a fake. But who was this girl? It turns out that in 1677, a major fire had already occurred in this small town in northern Shropshire, destroying many wooden houses. The fire was caused when a 14-year-old girl named Jane Cherm accidentally set a roof on fire with a candle. Jane died in the blaze, and her spirit is said to occasionally return to the site where her home once stood. This photograph is one of the most famous among all ghost photos. It was taken in 1959 by a woman named Mabel Chinnery. On that day, she and her husband had gone to the cemetery to visit her late mother's grave. Mabel stayed at the cemetery a bit longer while her husband returned to their car. As she was walking back to the vehicle, she decided to take a photo of her husband sitting in the driver's seat. Then they both went home. When Mabel developed the photograph, she was shocked because there was someone in the image who looked very much like her mother. The Chinneries insisted that no one was in the back seat at the time the photo was taken. Yet we can clearly see a figure. The quality of the photo doesn't allow for a detailed examination. But we can make out that it appears to be a woman in glasses with a white scarf around her neck. Mabel was convinced it was her mother. Of course, the picture became a sensation. Photography experts examined it multiple times, but none of the tests confirmed the use of double exposure or a reflection, which means one thing. The photo is genuine. William Mumler became the first photographer to make a living by taking pictures of living people with the ghosts of their deceased relatives. Of course, this could be called a scam, but in the mid-19th century, most people were unfamiliar with photography and therefore believed him. Before his new line of work, Mumler was a jeweler in Boston. However, he decided to leave that profession after meeting a woman named Hannah, who claimed to be a medium and could communicate with the spirits of deceased relatives. Mumler was fascinated by this and became interested in the occult himself, attempting to predict the future. One day, while at home experimenting with his new expensive camera, he decided to combine two photographs, one of his deceased brother and one of himself. The result impressed him, and he began making money from it. People believed Mumler and paid him good money for portraits with ghosts, while he would sneak into clients' homes at night and steal the necessary photographs. Mumler's success came quickly. After making a fortune, he moved to New York, where he continued his work. However, 
His earnings didn't sit well with another charlatan, showman P.T. Barnum, who sued Mumler, accusing him of faking his photographs. To prove otherwise, Mumler presented a portrait of himself with the spirit of Abraham Lincoln, who he claimed had visited him. Surprisingly, the photo passed inspection and was declared authentic. Thus, the court dismissed the case, and Mumler was set free. Despite this victory, the situation, along with several public exposures of his fraud, took a heavy toll on the photographer's mental health, and he eventually went insane. Tantallon Castle is a partially ruined fortress from the 14th century, built by William Douglas, the Earl of Douglas. For a long time, it was simply a tourist attraction. However, in May 2008, after tourist Christopher Aitchison captured a mysterious figure on his camera, Tantallon became a popular site for paranormal enthusiasts. In the photograph, we see a man looking out a window, dressed in what appears to be old-fashioned clothing. According to Christopher, at the time the photo was taken, he hadn't seen anyone in the window. He only intended to photograph that side of the castle. He noticed the strange figure only when reviewing his photos. Additionally, Christopher is confident that there were no other people inside the structure during his visit. The unusual photo underwent several expert analyses, all of which confirmed that it wasn't a fake. What's even more surprising is that Christopher's photo is not the only one to capture a ghost at Tantallon Castle. Another similar image was taken in 1976 by a traveler named Grace Lamb, who photographed her husband and two daughters inside the castle. Like Christopher, she only noticed the ghost when reviewing the photos. However, in the 1976 photo, we don't see the spirit of a man, but rather a woman dressed in a red gown. Who knows? Perhaps this ancient castle is truly home to ghosts who are careful not to reveal themselves to visitors. On December 27, 2015, Lisa Staggs, a resident of New Orleans, Louisiana, photographed a strange light in the window of an abandoned medical center near her workplace. She shared the image on one of her social media accounts, and within a few days, the photo spread across the internet with users speculating about what exactly she had captured. According to Lisa, the light reminded her of Christmas tree lights. However, there was certainly no tree or anyone else in that building. Because of this, internet users dubbed the object captured by the woman the Christmas ghost. Lisa Staggs works as a nurse at a hospital located across from the abandoned medical center. She explained that the building has been deserted since 2005 when it was heavily damaged by Hurricane Katrina, so there hadn't been anyone inside for a long time. Lisa showed the photo to her colleagues, and one of them said that the purple glow reminded him of his brother, who died in that medical center in 2004. Of course, it's impossible to say for sure that it was the ghost of her colleague's brother, as it could have been the spirit of anyone else, or perhaps not a ghost at all. Unfortunately, the true cause of the strange glow remains a mystery. In horror movies, it's common to see people noticing distorted reflections in mirrors or spotting ghosts in developed photos. A similar situation happened to the authors of this picture. At first glance, there's nothing strange about the photo. We see a married couple who decided to take a selfie. But if you look closely, Something seems off. The man and woman are looking into the camera, standing in front of a glass door. In the reflection, we can see that the man is standing with his back to the doors, so we don't see his face there. However, the woman's face, turned toward the camera, is somehow visible in the reflection. If she had been facing the glass door at the time of the shot, this reflection would make sense. But she was looking at the camera. So how could her face appear in the reflection? This photograph sparked a lot of debate. Some people think it's a hoax, while others believe it might have happened due to the camera's technical quirks. The authors of the photograph claim that at the moment of the shot, both of them were looking directly into the camera, and the picture was taken on a smartphone with a single press of the button, without any editing in photo software. So how this strange reflection appeared in the shot remains a mystery.
Mars continues to surprise scientists, gradually revealing more and more of its secrets. In 2004, NASA researchers, using the Opportunity rover, discovered hundreds of unusual small blue spheres that resembled blueberries. The discovery was made on the Meridiani Plateau. You can see what these Martian spheres look like in these unique photographs. As soon as the spheres were brought to Earth, scientists began studying them. An analysis of their composition showed that they consist of hematite, an iron mineral. The spheres were scattered chaotically across the plateau and were also found in the Martian soil. Scientists would love to answer the question of how they formed, but unfortunately, they currently have only a few theories. Most likely, the spheres formed similarly to how pebbles form on Earth, which means that their discovery could prove that there was water on Mars, and therefore potentially life. According to another theory, the spheres might be nothing more than meteorite fragments. Scientists are continuing to investigate the mystery of the Martian spheres, and perhaps soon, we will know whether there was life on the red planet or not. I believe many of you will find this photo quite eerie. Looking at the boy captured in it, one might think he's not alive as he resembles a ghost. In fact, the photographer claimed that he indeed managed to capture a ghost. This picture was taken in 1976 in a house where, two years earlier, a horrific mass murder took place shocking the residents of the small town of Amityville, New York. On the night of November 13, 1974, a young man named Ronald Joseph DeFeo ran into Henry's bar, the son of a successful businessman. He told the men there that a tragedy had occurred in his home, and his entire family, including his father, mother, and four siblings, had been murdered in their beds. Naturally, the police arrived at the scene. After inspecting the house and crime scene, they arrested Ronald Joseph DeFeo, as it seemed suspicious that he was the only one to survive the killings. The young man quickly confessed, telling detectives that he committed the heinous murders on the orders of voices in his head. Soon after the crime, DeFeo's neighbors began reporting strange occurrences in the house, including the appearance of a boy resembling the 13-year-old brother of the arrested man. Two years later, professional photographer Jim Campbell along with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren, decided to investigate the DeFeo house for signs of ghosts. They set up several infrared cameras throughout the house. Eventually, they managed to capture one photo that showed the ghost of a teenage boy. This photograph has, of course, been heavily criticized. But who knows? Perhaps the spirit of the 13-year-old boy, whose life was taken by his own older brother, still resides in the house. The photographs you see on your screens were taken in 1988 by a Swiss traveler named Gregor Spori. He was fascinated by ancient Egypt and loved searching for the most amazing and unusual artifacts. In 1988, tomb raiders told him about a man named Nagib, who possessed something that greatly intrigued Gregor. After traveling about 100 kilometers from Cairo, the traveler finally found the owner of the unique artifact. To see it, Spori had to pay a certain amount, after which he was shown a giant hairy finger that, according to its owner, belonged to a giant. Spori was amazed by its size and estimated that the giant it belonged to must have been over five meters tall. When Nagib showed Gregor an X-ray image of the finger, there were no doubts left about the authenticity of the artifact. The traveler offered large sums of money for the remains, but Nagib refused to sell them. In 2009, Gregor returned to Egypt, hoping to buy the giant's finger, but unfortunately, he was unable to find its owner. This photograph captures the St. Augustine Lighthouse located in St. Louis. It is a local landmark in the state of California. In particular, locals believe that it's a place where ghosts reside. The history of the lighthouse dates back to the 16th century, when it was originally a watchtower built by the Spanish. In 1737, the tower was fortified, and in 1824, a lighthouse was installed in its place. After several more reconstructions, its height reached 50 meters. For a long time, until the 1960s, 
lighthouse keepers and their families lived inside the lighthouse. Therefore, it's no surprise that some believe ghosts may inhabit the structure. Local residents report that they sometimes see three small silhouettes resembling children on the lighthouse's balcony. Those who have been inside the building have noted some strange occurrences, like objects moving on their own. According to the legend explaining the presence of these ghosts, they belong to children who experienced a tragic accident. In the summer of 1873, four children of the lighthouse keeper, along with a 10-year-old girl, were playing with a supply cart. The children climbed into the cart, which suddenly rolled off and fell into the water. The children were trapped in the cold waters of the Atlantic. The lighthouse keeper saw what had happened and rushed to help, but only managed to save two of the five children. Since then, people have shared stories of children's ghosts appearing around the lighthouse and inside it. This photograph was taken on January 13, 2012. It shows a group of friends posing for a fun group picture. You might wonder, what's strange about it? But I suggest you take a closer look, particularly at the hands of these teenagers. How many hands do you see? I believe the most observant among you might have noticed that one hand with a raised thumb clearly doesn't belong to anyone. Let's take another look at the picture. The boy in the white shirt is making a gesture with one hand while his other hand is down. The boy in the gray shirt has one hand on his friend's shoulder and the other hand down. The third boy who is shirtless has both hands on his friend's shoulders and is making a rocker gesture. Finally, the boy in the black shirt is gesturing with one hand and his other hand is down. So whose ninth hand is it? Users debated this for a long time. Some believed that a fifth person was hiding behind the friends while others saw something mystical in the photograph. However, the mystery of this picture remains unsolved. The story of the Somerton man could make an excellent movie plot as no detective or police officer has yet managed to figure out what really happened. On December 1st, 1948, the body of a man was found on Somerton Beach in South Australia. The man appeared to be about 40 years old. Next to his body was an unlit cigarette, and in his pockets there was a train ticket, chewing gum, and a pack of cigarettes. The man's shoes were meticulously polished, which could indicate that he did not die on the beach. Additionally, a scrap of paper from Omar Khayyam's book Rubaiyat was found in his trouser pocket, with the words Tamam Shud, which can be translated as finished or ended. The man's body was sent to pathologists to determine the cause of death. No alcohol or other substances were found in his blood, but the autopsy revealed severe kidney and liver damage, which could have been caused by poisoning, though the man had no signs of vomiting, which should have occurred in such cases. The police began searching for the book from which the fragment with the inscription was torn. Surprisingly, the book was found. A local resident contacted the police, saying that a few weeks before the body was found, he had discovered a strange book on the back seat of his car, seemingly thrown in through the open window while he was in Glenelg, the town where the deceased man had traveled before his death. In addition to the missing pages, some encrypted words were found on the first page of the book, Many cryptologists attempted to decode them, but no one was able to find a key or understand the message. On the last page of the book, there was a phone number. When the police called it, they discovered that it belonged to a nurse who lived not far from where the man's body was found. During questioning, she said she had never seen this man, but she did recognize the book of Omar Khayyam, which she had given as a gift to Lieutenant Alfred Boxall. The lieutenant was able to produce the book, but it was intact, with no missing pages. The deeper the investigation went, the more complicated the case became. The identity of the deceased man was never established. It is likely that he was murdered, but the crime was carefully planned. To this day, the case remains unsolved. In 1975, the Berthelot family witnessed a mystical phenomenon in St. Mary's Church, located in Worstead, Norfolk, England. That day, Diana, her husband Peter, and their 12-year-old son visited the church. 
Diana often spent long hours in churches praying, and on this occasion she did the same. While she prayed in silence, her husband Peter decided to take a photograph of her. At the time, nothing unusual happened, but when the Berthelots developed the photograph, they were stunned with horror. In the image, they saw a white shadow sitting behind Diana. Judging by the outline of the figure, it appeared to be a woman in old-fashioned clothing and a small hat. The following year, Diana and Peter returned to the church and asked the locals if they had noticed anything strange or mystical. To their surprise, the priest told them a legend about the White Lady, also known as the Healer. According to the legend, this ghost appears only when a sick person is praying in the church. Diana then remembered that she had been very ill the previous year. And after visiting the church, she began to feel much better and eventually fully recovered. At first glance, this photo seems quite ordinary. It shows a happy couple and their grown children. However, the story that happened to these people shocked all of Australia. Mark and Jacoba Trump were regular farmers who had been married for a long time and raised three children, Rihanna, Ella, and Mitchell. On August 29, 2016, the entire family suddenly left their home in a hurry and disappeared. Upon examining their house, it was found that none of the Tromps had taken their documents or bank cards. Their mobile phones were also left behind and turned off. The details of this incident were uncovered only thanks to the account of one of the Tromp daughters, Rihanna. It turns out that the head of the family, Mark, told his children that someone was following them, so they needed to leave the farm immediately. Early in the morning of August 29th, they drove Ella's car to Bathurst, located 800 kilometers away from their home. Mark had ordered them to leave behind all documents and phones to avoid being tracked. However, Mitchell did take his phone, but along the way, Mark forced him to throw it out. Because of this, Mitchell decided to escape from the family and return home. After arriving in Bathurst, the Tromps headed to the Genelin Caves. It was there that Ella and Rihanna decided to run away from their paranoid parents. The girls stole a car and drove to Goulburn, where they reported their parents as missing. Rihanna then drove home, where the police found her. That same day, Mitchell also returned to the farm, while Ella was found on August 31st in a disoriented state in a stranger's car. On September 1st, Jacoba was found wandering in the town of Yas. The head of the family, Mark, was discovered on September 3rd near the airport in Wangaratta. All family members were brought back home. But what caused this strange disappearance? Mark and Jacoba were diagnosed with shared psychosis, folia du. Both of them believed they were being pursued. After undergoing psychotherapy, the couple recovered and returned to farming. However, the reason why their children participated in the escape from imaginary pursuers remains a mystery. In 2019, something very unusual happened to 57-year-old Jennifer Hodge, a resident of Atlanta, Georgia. One evening, while relaxing in her bedroom and watching TV after work, the security cameras installed in her home detected movement in the kitchen. Jennifer decided to check what was happening. Looking at the monitor, she saw a semi-transparent figure in the kitchen. Upon closer inspection, she realized that it was likely a ghost. Jennifer noted that this spirit looked very much like her son, Robbie, who had tragically passed away at the age of 23 in 2017. The woman couldn't believe her eyes and hurried to her daughter's bedroom so they could go downstairs to the kitchen together. Unfortunately, by the time they got there, the ghost had disappeared. According to Jennifer, she wasn't scared at all when she saw the ghost. In fact, she was happy because it meant that her son, despite his death, was still trying to stay close to his family. In this photograph, we see the Pollock sisters, whose birth, according to their parents, is unique proof of reincarnation. The story began in 1957 when the Pollock's daughters, Jacqueline and Joanna, died in a car accident while walking to church with friends. Sometime after this tragedy, Mrs. Pollock became pregnant again, and on October 4, 1958, she gave birth to twin girls named Jillian and Jennifer. As the daughters grew up, 
The Pollocks began to notice that the girls seemed to know things they simply couldn't have known. For instance, they asked for toys that had belonged to their deceased sisters, even though they had never heard about them. They also had a terrible fear of cars and would panic at the sight of them. Additionally, Jennifer had the same birthmark as Jacqueline and a mole on her forehead in the exact spot where Jacqueline had a scar from a fall. All of this led to one conclusion. The Pollock's deceased daughters had been reincarnated into the twin girls. This story attracted the attention of both paranormal researchers and psychiatrists. Canadian-American psychiatrist Ian Stevenson studied the phenomenon of these girls in detail and found much evidence supporting the idea that the Pollock twins were an example of reincarnation, as well as several similar cases. However, most people dismissed the story as a hoax and over time, the Pollock sisters' phenomenon was forgotten. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your engagement is the best reward for me. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.